Stage 13 of the Tour de France was the third last sprint opportunity for Mark Cavendish and Quickstep sitting on 33 Tour de France stage wins to equal Merck's record. 220 k's from Nîmes to Carcassonne, another rolly day where Quickstep would need to control the break. They didn't on stage 12. It was a pretty technical run into the uphill drag finish. The commissaires extended the three kilometer rule to 4.5 k's to go because of you see that technical chicane. It was quite a little bit downhill as well. So certainly not a day for GC for Tata Pogacar and Quintana's polka dot jersey was safe as well but just like on stage 12 a large break tried to form strong rulers like Volscheid you can see here trying to get in the break with Jonas Ruch guys like that because there aren't five or six teams here with big sprint trains that can bring a break back Loris Udal you see Roger Kluger in this break Caleb Ewan's crashed out so bringing back a break is primarily the responsibility of Quickstep and I guess RK and Alperson if they decide to but that large break was controlled and then a smaller more manageable one went with Goldstein, Sean Bennett and Pierre Latour and they were kept at about four minutes all day so we knew it was going to be a bunch sprint finish unless something crazy happened in the finale. Quick step, Jumbo Visma, UAE were happy with the composition of that break. The DSM kind of like what they did last year with Casper Pedersen bridging riders across. They tried to bridge to that break and you see here in this image the lead out, the sprint lead out doesn't just start at like two kilometers to go. It starts out of the neutral zone making sure you've got a break composition that you're happy with and can control and then if any further moves trying to strengthen that break, try and go up the road, you chase them down like you see Ballerini doing here for De Koenig quick step so that move was foiled and quick step lucked out again with Alperson Phoenix being more than happy to work on the front giving Tim de Klerk a little bit of rest despite Philipson consistently not being quite quick enough and those chances certainly worsened by the fact that he doesn't even have his shoulder price lead out of like the Bont etc. Intermediate sprint was won by Colbrelli ahead of Matthews again Cavendish didn't seem too fussed by it at all and to be honest if he makes it to Paris Cavendish is going to win the green jersey anyways winning way too many points in the final sprints Goldstein and Latour attacked dropping Sean Bennett those two wouldn't get the combativity prize despite those efforts and unfortunately on this descent the riders apparently I heard on race radio the warning of gravel there was some gravel on the right hand side of the road some riders crashed and went down into this verge there was an abandoned afterwards, Lucas Hamilton abandoned. A lot of the DSM riders were caught up with this. I think Case Bowl was involved with his lead out as well. Not great in the run into the sprint stage for him to crash and he's not had great luck so far. Rafael Michael was also caught up, I think, and he seemed to be fairly injured. So I don't have any more information about whether he'll start tomorrow or not. And it was Tim de Klerk, the man we're also familiar with, pacing on the front for the Koenig quick step was pretty banged up. He just finished inside the time limit today. We'll wait to see if he starts tomorrow. And because he wasn't there, it was down to the world champion Philippe on these long drags. Yes, they're not categorized clients, but they're certainly tiring at the end of a 220 kilometer stage. Philippe having to pace and control, but he wasn't able to do it too much. And Quickstep had to manage and fend off a few attacks in the last 20 kilometers. Movistar with Garcia Cortina and Ineos. There was a hint of crosswind, but it really was pretty light. They tried to put Pogacar under pressure. You see him in the background isolated as usual. He's preferred since stage 7 Pogacar to just manage his own affairs in these crosswind moments and he's done so pretty well to be honest. And so Ineos efforts as you deserve Citroen on the front with Greg Van Avrema didn't really come to anything and we knew it was going to be a bunch sprint. And so Quickstep had the riders they need going into the last kilometre. They had Asgren take over with about 1500 metres. He's still on the front under the Flamme Rouge and everyone is trying to get onto Mark Cavendish wheel. No other sprinter has more than one guy to lead him out. Philipson's got Ricard behind, I think, Jesper Sturven, who's on Mark Cavendish wheel. You see Cole Brelli, Buani, Eating Wind. Juan Van Aert's really deep. He was out of position and deep this entire sprint. And because of the absence of another sprint train or lead out to really contest Quick Step and come over the top of them, Ballerin is looking behind, thinking, can I go later? Do I really need to begin this acceleration now? There's a left hand sweeping bend with about 650, 700 meters to go. And he lets Let's Asgren dangle a little bit on the front and he's going to try and bide his time because they want to drop Cavendish off as late as possible. Even 100 metres, that's fine on this uphill drag or later. But DSM tries something different. Niels Erkhoff accelerates with Case Bowl on his wheel trying to come over the top of Ballerini who's pulling. The problem is he's one rider. It's a false flat uphill drag and there's about 500 metres to go as well as this road being pretty wide so Ballerini comes up underneath him and so Bowl's only option at this point is to try and slot into the quick step train but it has caused a bit of disruption with quick step Cavendish has lost Murkov's wheel he's on I think Michael Matthews wheel and Buani is also trying to close on to Murkov's wheel so problems for Cavendish Ballerini begins that lead out 
and Merkov lets his wheel go. Now, I don't know if Merkov knew that Kamenich wasn't on his wheel, but now Echov goes again, and Bowl loses his wheel. Kamenich slots back onto Merkov's wheel around Michael Matthews on the barriers. Merkov takes Niels Echov's wheel, which Bowl gives up, and so now the quick step reverse leadout is playing out perfectly, with Ballerini up the road, has to be brought back, the winner of Omni had nose plate with 300 meters to go. Merkov's watching to see if anyone else is going to close it down quicker than Echov, who's already been pulling for a long time, jumps on even Garcia Cortina's wheel, with Kamenich on his wheel. It's strung out at 60 k's to go on this uphill drag and you see Philipson behind Cavendish. We have like 125 meters to go. Philipson is going to try and jump around Cavendish early and box him in. It's the only way he can win but he's not able to get his handlebars in front of Cavendish and keep him boxed in. Cavendish comes out of the slipstream and for the fourth time at this year's Tour de France wins the stage ahead of his own teammate Murkov who comes second almost having to slow pedal to let Cavendish come through. He did such a good job, Marco, but Cavendish equals Eddie Merckx, 34 Tour de France stage wins, Philipson third, and this was another masterclass from De Kernick Quickstep. They had DSM put them under a little bit of pressure with 600 meters to go, where maybe Quickstep were burning through their men too quickly. They then played the reverse Uno card, reverse lead out with Ballerini, then having Erkhoff doing the lead out for Murkov and then Garcia Cortina for him, meaning that Cavendish only had to come out of the wheel with like 40 meters to go. The media is going crazy. You see photo number 32, bit of a deviation there, but number seven gives it back to him. I guess that's just photography. And who would have believed this at the start of this year? Cavendish taking four stage wins in the tour before the second rest day. Green looks pretty much sewn up and Phoenix Alpas and Phoenix wake up Friday, 9 July. Same thing happens today as Tuesday, 6 July. You help Quickstep with the lead out. You leave Philipson with one man, Ricard, to just put him on Cavendish wheel. This will be the result. And here are the final results. Cavendish first, Murkov second. You'll be happy if you got him in your Valagames team for like four points. Philipson third, Garcia Cortina fourth, Van Poppel fifth. But let's hear what Cavendish had to say after his historical stage win. Cortina went, well, that's a good jump. I was just lucky at Murkov there. He just dragged him back. Um, I was, like, the lads just played it calm, calm. I lost a little bit on that last right hander. The roads with about four or five K to go got a bit slippy. I thought I punctured. And then everyone else was like, oh no, it's, it's the road. It's still just another win on the Tour de France. It's like my first one. I've won a stage of the Tour de France. And now the next question you might have is, can Cavendish beat the record? What are the opportunities he has left? Well, there's two sprint opportunities. Stage 19, 209 kilometers long. Transition stage after the two heavy mountain stages. If stage 12 is anything to go by after the Mont Blanc 2 stage, quick step and Cavendish might be a little bit tired and they might let the break go or might not have a choice to let it go on this stage, similar to last year. But of course, where he's won before, Champs-Élysées, Stage 21, that would be the perfect moment for Cavendish to break the record. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did, and I'll see you at the recap of Stage 14 tomorrow. Ciao.